started. Great. All right, well, um, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, Compton scattering, which we started last time and got sort of third of the way through, and then say something about the um, about the Feynman rules and about other processes that can uh, that occur at the second order uh, level. So, um, so let's see. Um, so for Compton scattering, let me just review what we had before. I'll just sort of skip some steps. S here is S infinity minus infinity to have things as close to what we were doing before. And it's then um, P prime, K prime, this is the electron, final electron and photon, P squared of the two, time order product, integral P fourth X, P fourth Y, psi bar. Let me use the slash notation. Um, A slash is gamma mu, A mu. In fact, anything slash means that four vector mu, gamma mu, with one index up, the other down, and it doesn't matter which is which. So this is A slash psi, all of this at x, psi bar, A slash psi, all of that at y, and then P. So that's the, that's the matrix element, in fact, for Compton scattering. And um, I don't, how, how much detail do you want to see of the stuff that we already covered? Shall I just skip to where we left off? Or would some of you like to see it again? No, okay. All right, well let's just say then that what you do, first of all, is you notice that X and Y are perfectly symmetrical here. So you cancel the factor of two and you just single out the X vertex uh, for uh, as, as the one where something uh, or, 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 or else ha something particular happens. And the two Feynman diagrams for this look like this. Um, K comes in, this is P, P prime, K prime, and again P, K prime, K, P prime. So these are the two fine diagrams, and what we decided was that, um, that uh, X is the vertex that emits the final electron. So this is vertex X here. So I've got out of out alphabetical order. And um, going through that, we we got to the point of saying, that, well, this is um, E squared over 2 pi to 10 D4 X D4 Y D4 Q P minus I, P prime X plus I, P Y plus I Q, X minus Y. And then we had here uh, U bar prime. Actually, I can make this somewhat, if I use the slash notation then, let me divide by the square root of 2K0. 2k0 prime. The photon case, uh, in the photon case, the thing left behind is square root of 2 pi cubed in the denominator and square root of 2k0. In the electron case, it's just square root of 2 pi cubed, and the analog of 2p0 is built into the uh, spinners. And so this then would be epsilon slash star prime e to the minus i k prime x or epsilon slash e to the i k x and then 
might as well pull out a minus i here, and then this becomes uh, minus i q slash plus m over q squared plus m squared minus i epsilon, and then we have here epsilon slash e d i k y epsilon star prime slash e minus i k prime y, and then u. So this is the initial spinner, this is the final spinner. And we choose either the up line or the down line. In the up line, the final photon is emitted at vertex x. So the up line corresponds to this uh, process, whereas the down line corresponds to that process. Okay. All right. Um, And as I said uh, last time, I remember uh, we already got this part. D4 of x, e d i, any four vector dot x is equal to 2 pi to the fourth delta fourth of that four vector s. And um, so I remember we applied these delta functions. So you, the, the very nice thing about this calculation is that you get from the d4 of x, d4 of y, uh, and the d4 of q, you get three delta functions. And uh, so the, the or, or I should say, from delta d fourth x d fourth y, you get two delta functions. That makes the d fourth q integration trivial, whereas otherwise it would be very hard. And um, so as a result of that, let me show you what, what we get to. Well, let me skip the next line there. So what we get to then is uh, p prime k prime s p k then is equal to minus i e squared over. Now see each of these gives these integrals gives a two pi to the fourth, so that kicks out two pi to the eighth, and you're down here to merely two pi squared. Um, and then you have one less left over delta function, p prime plus k prime minus p minus k. So this is overall energy momentum conservation. Um, and then this is over the square root of 2k0, 2k0 prime. And all that then is times u bar prime, the final spinner, and then we have these different possibilities. Um, the top line I'll write first. So the top line gives us epsilon star prime slash, and then minus i. And now q has to be p plus k in this case. So this is p slash plus k slash plus m, and then it's divided by p plus k squared plus m squared. Do you want me to do the delta functions in detail? I think I did them last time, but do you want, do you want to see the delta function? No, OK. All right, so that's that. And then here we have epsilon slash and and then the next term is plus epsilon slash minus i. And now here we have p slash minus k prime slash plus m. No, this was an unfortunate choice here. Of See, that's the problem with this room is that the boards are not black and the they don't go all the way around the room, so you have these, this gap here. In any event, this is divided by p minus k prime squared plus m squared. We can leave out the i epsilons because it turns out that these things are never zero. And now there's epsilon star prime slash at the end of this 
close curly brackets U. All right. So that's the amplitude at that point. And the first term gives you the gives you this diagram. The second term gives you that diagram. Any questions? Okay. Now, it turns out... Now, so from now on, all your base, there, there are two basic things to do before you get a cross-section. The first is that we've been working in continuum... Not the first, but one of them is we've been working in, in, in continuum normalization rather than box normalization. And um, that actually makes things somewhat confusing because the norms of these states are um, are delta function, the delta function norm states, whereas uh, the box normalization states, which we were previously using to calculate probability, were just norm to the number one. And um, so in order to calculate the probabilities, we have to sort of translate this answer back to box normalization. The other thing we have to do is some arithmetic. And the arithmetic in this particular case goes on for quite a while. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'll do some of it for you, and the rest I'll just show you uh, what one <coughs> Um, otherwise, we would be here on this one process all day. Some of the arithmetic is very simple. For example, these P, P prime, K, and K prime are on the mass shell. So P squared is equal to P vector squared minus P zero squared. And of course, that is equal to minus m squared, where m is the mass of the electron or the mass of the positron. And the same thing with p prime squared. Also, k is a photon, so k squared is equal to k vector squared minus k zero squared, and that's equal to zero. We're in natural units here, so that's why that's the case. Although it would have to be zero in any unit. But p squared is m, minus m squared in natural units. Um, so these denominators simplify. In particular, um, p plus k squared then is equal to p squared plus k squared minus plus 2 p dot k. And this then is equal to minus m squared. And this is equal to zero. And so, but what we have is we have this structure plus m squared and also plus m squared here. So if we have m squared plus this, it's plus m squared. This cancels out to zero. That is zero. So altogether, this is just 2p dot k. So we can, we can replace all of this by just 2p dot k. Similarly, over there, m squared plus p minus k prime squared is equal to, well, this plus that is 0, that's 0, so this is minus 2p dot k prime. And so this thing becomes minus 2p dot k prime. And this dot, of course, is with the capacity dot product. Um, okay, well, Weinberg writes this as minus 2 pi i delta 4 of p prime plus k prime minus p minus k times the matrix element m. And um, so our m is basically, in fact, exactly p squared over 4, 2 pi cubed, squared k0, 
K0 prime, U bar prime, and now um, epsilon prime star slash um, minus I P slash plus K slash plus M epsilon slash over 2 P dot K. Actually, we could factor out the 2, but for some reason he did it, so I'm leaving it also. Minus I P slash minus K prime slash plus M epsilon prime star slash and then divided by 2 P dot K prime and then put together a U. Okay, so remember U is a four vector, column four vector. This thing is a four by four matrix because of the gammas. This is a four by four matrix. This is just a number. Another four by four matrix. And over here, four of the same thing. Four by four matrix all along a number. And then a four by four vector that's on its side, on its side an adjoint basically. And that gives a, uh, um, just simply a number. And remember, U bar prime is equal to U prime dagger times beta. And beta squared is 1. Beta is that 0, 1, 1, 0, 4 by 4 matrix. OK, so now um, to, to get to a probability and so forth, what we need to do is think about the normalization of um, the states. The, the states we're using are continuum normed, and so they're normed to delta cubed of, um, I mean, it's either zero or it's delta cubed of zero. And delta cubed of zero, well, that's the volume over 2 pi cubed. Just a little pig flu, don't worry. Um, and the reason why this is true is the same reason why this is true. In other words, if you have delta of zero, this is the fourth, this is the fourth part of the, the, the four-dimensional delta function. Delta four of zero is space times time. Oh, the pizza. Yeah, all right, here. Um, well, put it more sort of there. Yeah. Here, let me do some kind of Jesus man. forms, and then I'll come back and continue the calculation. Um, um, how many, does anybody need a pencil? Because I can go get pencils from the physics problem. Anybody need pencils? So the answer is no pencils. All right. <coughs> 
All right, so can you... If I can stop this... Yes, stop it, stop it. Go on stage, yeah.